I, you all know that I'm really new as a Michael Jackson fan, so there's like so much I don't know about him yet. And as I discover more and more, like my friend was telling me, my okay, I have friends who know everything about this person. I, I swear that if he knew about them, he would probably hire them because they're so knowledgeable about him. Miss Lily sent me some videos last week and some articles and, and you know, the more I hear about it, that angle, um, yeah, it, 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 I believe that he possibly was murdered. I, I still can't get past believing that he's alive. I don't know why. But I am getting to the point where maybe he's never coming back. Well, I, I like keeping an open mind. Um, there's so many people, so many of you out there that know so much. Getting back to my friend Joni, who yesterday we did a little MJ tour in the afternoon. We went to Forest Lawn. We got there after, we got there at 4.45, I guess they actually closed the buildings at 4.30. You know, we, we stood there and we started, what's the word, schmoozing? We started schmoozing with the security guard and, and you know, we talked to him for at least 45 minutes and, and, and you know, on his spin about Forest Lawn's policy and, and why the Jacksons are doing what they're doing, you know, keeping it so private. and. You know that thing that looks like a casket? I just found this out yesterday. Amazing stuff. You know, I thought his body was actually in that, that gold thing there. And it and it's not. That actually opens up. It takes about four or five people to open it up. And you go down. And then underneath, there's like, I'm picturing it like another room where there's, he said, I think he said it would hold 12 caskets and 20 things on the side. I don't know if they're not if they're not caskets what would they be so after that we went to she says do you want to see where the Jackson Jackson family moved when they first moved here from Gary Indiana now how would she know this um, but she did and you know I don't think to ask because she, she's she's got a mind of Jackson knowledge that I will never have um, so we actually went up this street where um, I, I've even said to her you need to start your own business and do like Jackson 5 tours or something because I find the most uh, interesting stuff through her and then we went over to Carrollwood and I went around it again I can't remember who asked is there a back road no 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 we did the whole all the way around it there is no the only entrance I can see is the one that we saw and also the one with the garage where the car's in and and those two are it and while we're driving and she's telling me facts about michael jackson that i wouldn't know things like he loved banana cream pie and other things i'm like oh my god he's my brother from another mother well then on the way back into the valley we of course we have to drop by drive by encino so the encino house so we did that but I was watching a video today, and I watched an incredible, really, it was put together so well, and I've got it on my channel page now. Um, I loved it by Luna Joe, and she also had she also came out with another video about his innocence, about the trial. And watching that video, my new mission is not to prove that he's still alive. It's it's to be a voice for his innocence because there are so many people that still believe that he was a pedophile and and they say to me well how do you know he wasn't you know things well first of all I know it doesn't matter but let me just brainstorm here I may be way off this is my rationale you know thinking about the Gary Indiana house it was a two bedroom and and you know really small so I can imagine that there were probably most of the brothers maybe in one bedroom. So he's familiar with that type of thing. Those might have been even actually fond memories of when, when they all were in one room. You know, that closeness of 
I don't know. We're not from his past. We don't know what are his happiest memories. The media, though, has a way of spinning, we all know it, spinning what they want you to believe. They just do. I'll give you an example. You know, I think Sarah Palin, I think she's a dangerous threat to our future, the United States future. And yet, there is somebody that wants her in our future. Um, and I've got to admit, as dangerous as I believe her to be, every time I see a picture of her or something in the news about her, I can't help but find her like likable in a different way. You know, like if she was just a public figure, uh, not not an authority figure, but just a, you know, like I saw the picture of her. And they only show her in this like motorcycle jacket with her helmet and sunglasses and whatever it was. You know, and, and she looked pretty cool. And she always seems pretty spunky. And and these are images in my head that say, if it wasn't for her mouth and the words that come out of it, I might want her as a as an authority figure, but I know better, you know. I know better to let that mislead me but how many other people are not conscious of what's happening there with the cutesy mod um, spunky biker let's win everybody over uh, pictures that you know every picture tells a story don't it you know and they did the same thing with Michael Jackson They know that he was being set up in the trial, and very few people have come out and acknowledged that. Aphrodite Jones, she said that she was a reporter at that time. She wanted, she thought he was guilty until she heard the evidence, and she wanted to get the story right. And the paper that she worked for at the time wouldn't print it the way she wrote it, and other papers wouldn't print it the way she wrote it. She eventually had to write a book about how she felt he was framed, he was set up. You know, we let a lot of images come into our mind that influence our thoughts. And we really have to be careful of how it's influencing our thoughts. Innocent until proven guilty.